Let's bring in Arizona Congressman Andy Biggs. He serves on the House Judiciary and Oversight and Reform Committees. Congressman, good to see you. We do know that the Minority Whip Steve Scalise is supporting Elise Stefanik. President Trump is supporting her as well. And Pennsylvania Congressman Guy Reschenthaler, who's whipping votes on behalf of Stefanik, told the New York Post, quote, I think that if the vote gets called to remove Liz Cheney, you're going to have probably half the people that supported Liz in the last vote, if not more, vote to remove her. What changed since February? Well, uh, what changed is that we actually had the, the whip count to remove her in February, but Kevin McCarthy said he basically put all his chips in the center of the table and said, no, he wanted to keep, try, try to work with her further, so we lost votes. So she had enough to stay in. What changed more, though, is that she continued her tirade against uh, uh, President Trump and those who support President Trump. And she's doing it at, from a position of, of the, as the conference chair. The problem with that is no one cares if she believes that and if she wants to do that if she's not the conference chair. So she wasn't representing the most, and now Kevin's had enough, and, and that changes it because McCarthy is now with us uh, to remove her, and so there will be enough votes to remove her next week. I mean, she's had a very public back and forth with President Trump over this idea of the big lie. President Trump calls the 2020 election the big lie. Liz Cheney says this idea that the election is stolen is the big lie. Uh, by ousting her, is the GOP conference endorsing President Trump's view of the 2020 election? Uh, by ousting her, what we're saying is we are repudiating your repudiation of the Trump policies and the Trump agenda and her attacks on the president. So right now, uh, John, if I were to say this, uh, President Trump is the leader of the Republican Party. And when she's out there attacking him, she's attacking the leader of the Republican Party, and she's attacking uh, those of us who supported President Trump. She's attacking the base of the Republican Party who support President Trump. That is really the, the nub of this issue. In, in the Wall Street Journal today, Congressman, uh, the editorial board took the flip side of that coin, writing, quote, she, uh, this is a Liz Cheney, may be ousted because she is daring to tell the truth to GOP voters and at personal political risk, purging Liz Cheney for honesty would diminish the party. Your response? Uh, I don't even know where they're coming from because uh, I don't. I bet that writer doesn't get out and talk to the Republicans that I do on a on a daily basis because the Republicans around this country say that the Liz Cheney doesn't represent them. They're still supportive of President Trump. All the polling indicates that President Trump's still the, the title holder. She can tell what her vision of the truth is, but she can't do it as the leader of the Republican Party in Congress. And that's what she was trying to do. And, you know, if she wants to say what she wants to say once she leaves, that's great. If she has those opinions, that's her business. That's up to her, between her and her constituency. But when you take it out and you're acting as the person over all the Republicans in Congress, guess what? You've got to eat some of what your own personal feelings are for what 90% of our conference believes. And actually, it's higher than 90%, it's about 95%. And so right. she wasn't willing to do that. That's the problem, John. That no confidence vote coming up on the 12th of May. Uh, it's looking highly unlikely that she'll survive, but we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, let me jump to another topic. You and Congressman Jim Jordan have written a letter to the FBI Director Christopher Wray over more alleged FISA abuses. This stems from a November 2020 opinion from the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court that was just declassified last month that details, quote, apparent widespread violations of privacy rules by the FBI in carrying out Section 702 surveillance. What are you looking for from the FBI director? Well, we want transparency and honesty. Uh, we, we felt that that's been in short supply as he's reported to us. And why didn't he answer questions uh, in previous hearings where we've actually addressed these types of issues? So we want him to come clean, tell us what's going on, and, and allow us to find out what the remedy is. Because if, if we're spying on people, if we're, if we're violating their, their privacy rights, that's one of the reasons that 702 uh, is viewed with such uh, disdain and disapprobation by uh, not just Republicans, but anybody who's into civil liberties for the American people. Uh, you and your 60 and other Republican colleagues on the Oversight Committee sent another letter, this one to the White House Counsel, requesting documents uh, as you investigate whether or not John Kerry should lose his security clearance because of what Javad Zarif, the, the Iranian foreign minister, said 
that Kerry told him about Israel carrying out some 200 strikes against Iranian interests in Syria. Do you believe he should lose his security clearance? Absolutely. I think for right now, it should be suspended, absolutely, and then let us get to the bottom of it. He has denied it. Um, but until we know for certain, until investigation is uh, either affirms or confirm or, or disaffirms what has been said uh, by uh, the accusation by Zarif, he should be suspended, and that's that's just where it should be. Uh, this is too critical. It, it impacts our allies in the region, impacts our national security as well. All right, Congressman Andy Biggs, thank you so much for joining us today. Again, we'll be keeping an eye on that vote coming up on May the 12th. Appreciate your time, sir. Thank you, John.